The new MSNBC president, Rashida Jones, is attempting to draw a younger audience to the network by branching out into streaming with reports that host Nicole Wallace is in discussions with the streaming service Peacock about a new show there to bring in the youngins. Wow, that is a... Uh something else. Democratic strategist <laughs> and owner of JC Strategies, Jennifer holdsworth Carp, Senior Director of Policy at the Conservative Partnership Institute, Rachel Bovard, join us now to discuss. Now look, Jen, uh, Crystal and I welcome anybody to the streaming game, but uh, <laughs> let's, uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that the youths do not cry out for Nicole Wallace's B-level content um, from the 4 to 6 p.m. hour. The stuff they couldn't fit in in their two hours of cable news um, that they want to go ahead and stream. So what do you make of this as a news consumer yourself? Well, uh, I am uh, months away from turning 40, so apparently I'm not the target demographic of this show. Uh, <laughs> but um, it's a very odd decision. Um, I, I don't think that the audience that they're um, targeting um, even knows who she is. Um, now, look, I, I haven't watched MSNBC in years. I think it's unbearable. I don't think that there's really any news content worth watching on there. Um, uh, I think that <laughs> not everybody in that generation is going to remember that for a while we had a great deal of respect for Nicole Wallace and how she sort of left the Republican Party and turned on Sarah Palin and wouldn't vote for the ticket. And, you know, if, if you're familiar with that story, you probably have a, a certain sense of loyalty to her content because you feel that it's fair. Um, but even that is fading. Um, and I just don't think the show's been very good over the last couple of years. And I don't know how they're going to translate that into a streaming service. Um, I think it's it's very problematic. In fact, I think that there's even, you know, younger generations who, um, you know, based on the rise of this show, don't want to see any of the cable news platforms hmm. translate into those uh, into those streaming mediums. So I think it's going to be a really rough start. Yeah, Rachel, I mean, to to move a little bit away from the uh, personal insults of uh, <laughs> Nicole Wallace, who, of course, <laughs> a, rock, for. a rock war propagandist, <laughs> yeah. the fact that she's like a liberal icon now says a lot in and of itself. But what this story really reminds me is that before the Trump era, you know, back when I was at MSNBC, all of these networks were freaking out about what they were going to do. Ratings in decline, cord cutters, younger generations not tuning in every year, the average age of their average viewer going up and up and up. Donald Trump kind of gave them a respite, but he didn't really provide them with an answer. And you can see from the insane thinking that what young people want is more Nicole Wallace, you've already got two hours of her a day on MSNBC, just shows you how completely bereft of ideas they actually are. Yeah, it's fascinating to me that what they think the problem here is a platform, right? It's just mm. the platform. You yeah. know, people weren't watching, you know, moving it to streaming is what's going to solve the problem. And it's like, guys, no, the call is coming from inside the house. It's you, right? It's the it's what you're covering. It's kind of the content you're choosing, <laughs> it's the people you're putting out there. And until he, unless, you know, this streaming service is really going to change and be a break from kind of what the standard fare on MSNBC is, I don't know that it's actually going to make a difference. It's not just about the platform. It's the content and the people they put they put forward. And I think to your point, there's like zero self-reflection on that point. Yeah, I think it, it just must be like a, a lever they have to pull that fixes it and not just the content itself. That's right. And this is always the problem with cable news. No matter how terribly it is doing, it just holds so much power in American politics. On the right, what happens on Fox drives the day. And on the left, if a senator sees something that Jake Tapper or whatever, Rachel Morning Maddow, Joe. Morning Joe covers, they freak out. I mean, it doesn't matter um, with the fact that not that many people are even necessarily watching. And so what do you make of it from that perspective, Jen? I mean, if you if you run, when you run a campaign, right, and somebody's like, oh, I saw this on so-and-so, it holds so much power in our politics. They drive the day of everything. And that influences so much policy and so much of our politics. That's why I tend to gravitate towards uh, candidates who use alternate mediums. Um, mm -hmm. uh, you, you might remember that during uh, Secretary Pete's presidential run, one of his biggest mantras was go everywhere. And he mm -hmm. was every, on everything from, you know, TMZ to the Breakfast Club and everything in between because we knew that uh, that cable news mediums were not the only place to reach people. In fact, they were one of the worst places to reach people because they always 
appealed to people's worst sensibilities when it came to politics. There are these, you know, three minute flash segments with the worst possible talking points with all of the graphics and all, all of right. the advertisements. That, I think, appeals to the worst part of our politics. You know, I, I, I've been a guest on Fox News numerous, numerous, numerous times, and it, it is always, you know, the worst conversation that you could possibly have about the particular policy or mm -hmm. incident that you're talking about. I think more and more we're seeing younger candidates get away from that and try to appeal to a variety of mediums with a variety of content, like Rachel said. Yeah. How do you think these various networks, Rachel, are going to handle the Trump era? I mean, we've obviously gleefully covered here. There are crashing ratings every week <laughs> that Trump is gone. Um, but what sort of adjustments do you think that they're going to try to make? I can tell you back um, when the MSNBC ratings before Trump came around, when they were really um, when they were really struggling and they were having these like soul searching. Oh, my God, what are we going to do about the cord cutters? They decided they were going to try to bring in these NBC News journalists and make it more like CNN and more hard news down the middle. And then the minute Trump comes in, they realize the thing that rates like crazy is just, you know, liberal talking points, the resistance. So they move back in that direction. What sort of adjustments are they going to make now? Because when you've got sliding ratings, they feel like they got to do something. Yeah, I think, you know, the optimistic case is kind of what they were trying to do before, which is, again, realize that what people used to turn to for cable news is actually like down the middle journalism, like news mm -hmm. stories, you know, chasing, you know, things that aren't being reported elsewhere. But the cynical side of me says they know they had a cash cow with Donald Trump. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're just going to see Donald Trump retrospectives, right? Yeah. Everything is like still about Donald Trump a year from the like, uh, Fusion GPS, the Steele dossier, yep. a year from this, a year from that, we're just going to have these like constant playbacks. Yeah. And, you know, that's going to give them like the, the the small juice that they need. And then they're going to fall back into it again. Yeah, that's uh, literally all in the hits. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. all right. thanks, guys. Thanks, ladies. Thank you. More rising for you after this.